Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome back to a professional match of StarCraft 2. Now what I've got for you today is the finals of the Korean StarCraft League Weekly, the KSL number 17, where apparently our Zerg player is starting off this series with a spawning pool at 12 supply. That is not something we see very often anymore. So spawning right here in the top left hand corner of this best of five series, well, of Gresfin, that's game number one in this best of five series, playing with the red Zerg drones, we're looking inside of the main base of Dark. His opponent in the opposite corner with the blue protos pieces. He's also from Korea and he goes by the name of Classic. Ah, okay, that explains it. So, 12 pools. They're not particularly popular in the current meta of StarCraft 2. Primarily because Protoss players scout at the very start of the game. But Classic apparently, well Dark has figured out, that Classic is a fan of Gateway Scout. So he doesn't actually send a probe across until, well, the Gateway has been planted down. There's a drone moving with this as well. And the main problem, right, is that, well, first off, you wouldn't be able to block a 16 supply hatchery on the low ground, which is something that Dark is very fond of, but you're also not gonna figure out exactly what's going on in this game. Now, what are we gonna do with that drone on the other side? Because there's this non-stop Zirkling production. Okay, we're gonna help Protoss complete their wall off. So obviously, Zirklings are gonna be running across the map very quickly. Protoss is, well, gonna be forced to remake the wall because if they rely on this hatchery, right? Zerg can just cancel the hatchery and then have the Zerglings stream in. Now, there's definitely a hole over here. There's two gaps right here in this wall up for our Protoss player. He's gonna have to pay attention to that. Because Dark will be more than keen to cancel that hatchery and just allow his own Zerglings in. Okay, at this point, Classic has confirmed exactly what's going on. Another pylon here plugs the hole. And Crisis Management here for the time being, is all right. Uh, we may need another structure over here as well, because that gateway is in a little bit of trouble. Cybercore is over here, which is the more pivotal structure, I would say. Okay, will that Zealot spawn? Getting that Zealot out would be massive. Yeah, I think it will. Okay, keep in mind that Zerk is not droning behind this, right? So... It's just non-stop link production. Dark is planning on ending this game within the first few minutes. Uh, careful, dude. Okay, yeah, I guess he's almost inviting the hatchery to be cancelled. I actually thought that that was a mistake there from Classic, but it wasn't. The probe was stepping in to defend. Queen starts up here. Cybercore is in a little bit of trouble. Second Cybercore comes up as well, but not before a few shield batteries were planted down. Now that the creep is starting to spread, Protoss can't build on creep, so he needs to be very, very careful. Another hatchery actually has been started as well inside of the natural of the Zerg, but honestly, this doesn't really seem... Like a build where he's got a whole lot of longevity. Cybercore number one does get sniped. Okay, we've got a cheeky little drone over here. Sure. <laughs> Dark decides to go for a spine crawler as well. Here's the queen. Adept is about to pop. Lovely move right here. Moving the queen all the way back. But the adept, look at that. Okay, it snipes the creep tumor here. Which means that this, uh, this spine crawler is going to be in a lot of trouble. Okay, so was this worth it here for Dark? Absolutely not. Classic here at 31 supply, but 21 workers versus 14. Sure, this hasn't been entirely held yet, and he's still in a little bit of trouble. I wouldn't mind seeing that Adept actually go across the map, because there's very little available right now for the Zerg. Anyways, another tumor here is available, and it looks like that one is going to finish up. No way for the, uh, the Protoss player to really get rid of that. Now, it's a robo-facility follow-up. Classic has built it right underneath the vision of that Overlord, which I actually think is a pretty major error. Because over here it would be significantly better. The problem is, right, so... Ooh, Adept over here gets surrounded. That defense was really well done by Classic, but it's not like he's really going to be able to do a lot of damage on the back of this. Yeah, the problem with these, these robo-facility follow-ups is unlike, for example, a Stargate or a Twilight Council, Zerk can just drone. Zerk can just drone. Can he get at least one more worker? Okay, a little bit of mistargeting here too. So two adepts right there for essentially one drone is certainly not worth it. Um, at this point, Dark doesn't really have to worry about much of anything for another little while. Unless Classic effectively turns this into like a... Oh, he cancels the Immortal here. Okay, he cancels the Immortal and goes into a Robo Bay as well as a Prism. Yeah, okay, so this is even more delayed now. Unless you wanted to go for like a... 
a one base arc on immortal push i don't really see exactly what sort of aggression classic could do that doesn't hit in at least a few minutes from now so dark at this point must realize as well what's going on he is gonna notice here okay wait did he did he just cancel the immortal go into a prism cancel the prism go into an observer is that what we just did Either way, what this all comes down to, though, is that whatever aggression classic has got planned, it is gonna be late. So Dark, look at this. What a greedy boy. No gases, just drones. He's got some leftover Zerklings from earlier, sure, but they don't have any link speed or anything like that. Hallucinated Phoenix right now for Classic scouts it as well. He sees no gases taken over there inside of the main base. He's gonna see the lack of gases over here in the natural too. That's painful, man. Yeah, when you see this, you know for a fact that Zerk is just holding down the drone button. And there's nothing that he can really do about it. So, yeah, third Nexus is gonna start up, sure. We do have some um, disruptors now on the production tab. So, Gravitic Drive coming up as well. That's the Prism Speed upgrade. So, there is harassment here in the future for Classic, but... Uh, this takes a long time. Yeah, this takes a very long time. Fourth Hatchery even goes down. We finally have some gas income inside of the main base, but Dark is basically droning straight up to about 50 workers before he really started up any production. Considering how incredibly late his worker was, or sorry, his, uh, his worker production started, this is kind of nutty. Okay, so. Classic is gonna have to deal a significant amount of damage. Here's that Gravitic Drive upgrade finishing up, so the Prism suddenly gets uh, a nice little boost. Lair first, really? Okay, man, I love Dark's games, though. Proxy Hatch 12 pool into I am going to drone straight to about 60, and then I'm gonna spend my first gas on a lair. Absolute classic. If this would have been a a Twilight Council play with Glaive to Depths or a Stargate opener or something like that here for classic, he would not be able to pull that off. But in this particular instance, I think he'll be fine. Yeah. Getting one queen for the first detonation is not what you're looking for. A few adepts coming across the map as well. We're gonna apparently go straight into the ranged upgrade for Colossi. Fair enough. Uh, do we at the very least have... Yeah, we do have a Roach Warren. Okay, he didn't go absolutely nuts where we're just making slow Zerklings. Metabolic boost at this point is only about a third of the way done at the seven minute mark. Now this could be nice. We only activated a single one though, which is kind of cute. I think that's by design. Okay, eight drones end up going down. Roach speed? Oh, no. No roach speed. Instead, we're gonna go straight into a spire. Fair enough. Adept's over here as well, by the way, on the left side of the map. And now the damage is actually starting to add on, yeah? Not bad right here. Classic also now sees the spire, which is massive. Okay. More drones. Yeah, lovely. Don't lose the prism, though. Okay, nah, he's, he's, okay. It's almost like he's listening to me, even though these games were played a few days ago. Uh, he does manage to recall that prism over here. So he's seen the Spire. Twilight Council starts up here eventually. Plus one we've got going right now as well. I don't think I actually like this game very much for Classic anymore. I liked it a lot at the start of it, and Churi did just kill 22 drones, which is really sick. But... Considering the early game and how fantastic it was, I actually think the Robo follow-up right there was not very good. I think there the, the, should have been a Twilight Council. Like, he could have literally hit with a Glaive to Depth attack before Zerk would have ever had Link Speed done. Which would have been tremendous. Obviously, he doesn't really know, though, exactly how many workers and how much gas, I suppose, the Zerk has. So it's a little bit of guessing. Anyways, Muta's coming up. Plus one Flyer coming up here as well for Dark. So he is gonna double down on a Muta play. Twilight Council, very slow on starting that upgrade, so Blink is not, well, even remotely done. At least Ground Weapons level 1 is finishing up here, so that's something. Don't lose the Prism. Ay ay ay, that Prism took a whole lot of damage just now. I'm assuming we're gonna bring it together with this army. This is a very mediocre army at, bet uh, at best, though. Muta's gonna be really good against this. There's only a few Stalkers. One of which is gonna get sniped before the fight. Prism in a little bit of trouble, I suppose. Okay, there's a few Stalkers as well, some Guardian Shields, and a few Hallucinated Stalkers. That's cute. But the Zerklings in the meantime are tearing apart some of those expensive Protals units. At least the Hallucinated Stalkers, okay. Uh, they forced this, uh, this Zerk player to back off, because he thought there were more, but... This apparently just opens the door right now for Dark to add on even more Mutalisks. <laughs> At this point he realizes it's fake. 
Which is kind of funny because the Overseer is one of the few Zerg units that can actually detect this sort of thing. Anyways. Classic's economy is by no means bad, but he's once again going to be forced to play a defensive game. And considering the start, man, the fact that we're now at the 10 minute mark with full 4 base Zerg saturation is kind of nuts. I'm impressed so far with Classic's defense, but I just don't think the Robo follow-up was very good. Even though he dealt a lot of damage there. It just allowed the Zerg too much greed. Now let's see how good he is against this Muta follow-up though, because Mutas are a very dangerous unit to play against. Stalkers are actually not going to cut it in the long run. We don't actually have enough Mutas just yet, and this is a nice surround over here. More reinforcing Mutas up north, but these, yeah, there's no recall available for the Zerg last time I checked, okay. Ooh, he's trying to run in units. One Stalker. Okay, gets warped in over here. A few more on the back of it too, because somehow, some way, one Ling managed to get around it. Plus two immediately fired up as well. So Dark is just going to play Mass Muta. I've actually been playing a little bit of Mass Muta in my own games. And it's surprisingly fun. It's actually really strong. Um, if you can make, for example, like a, a, a big group of spine crawlers over here when you max out, it's incredibly powerful. Basically, any time that Protoss thinks about attacking, you just counterattack instead. And if you have like a forest of spine crawlers set up, you can 100% of the time win the base race. Maybe that's not what he's going for, though. Maybe that's also what Classic is trying to avoid here. Nice engagement over there, of course, killing those links. But he's now added on a bunch of Stargates, so maybe he does want to go into... One Corruptor, interesting. Maybe he does want to go into Phoenix production? I don't think I like Phoenixes anymore at this point. I think Archons and Storm would be a much better choice. Also because it's easier to reach. Apparently Classic is going to go into the Phoenixes. I want to believe, man, but we're now already at so many Mutas that they really don't care. They really are not going to care about the amount of Phoenixes that you've got. The probe damage has been minimal though, considering the harassment in this game. Only 11 probes have gone down in total. Zerklings could have certainly sniped that base, but Dark not quite thinking about that at this point. Okay, we're gonna be going into the Fleet Beacon as well. At Fleet Beacon Tech, there is an upgrade called the Anion Pulse Crystals that gives plus two range to the Phoenixes. Which will help them outrange these Mutas even more. And it does make them a very formidable counter, but you're gonna need a lot of Phoenixes. I would say you're gonna need at least 10 before they're gonna do anything. Classic following this up in a very Classic-esque way, though. Not oh, a Prism gets recalled back home. Well, it's super dead. <laughs> uh, classic is very good at the defensive playstyle, right? So he's very strong when it comes to playing these defensive games. And he wants to show us that he's still more than capable of it. But if there's no Archons and no Storm available, these Mutas can be microed really easily to deal with all of those Stalkers. Yeah, we're now at a point where they can easily fight Stalkers. Keep in mind that Mutas do have that m rapid regeneration passive. So it allows them to heal very quickly out of combat. If you pay attention right here to one of those Mutas, uh, you'll see that it starts regenerating much quicker than an other Zerg unit would. So all of the red HP ones already back up to orange. This is some very aggressive movement though, from Dark. Okay, he's now going into Muta Corruptor. Any on Pulse Crystals denied for now. Oh my god, he just jumped it. Okay, well. That upgrade is not gonna happen. At least not until he rebuilds it again. What is the finisher move here, though, for Dark? I'm not exactly sure. Like, this doesn't really strike me as an army that can close out the game anytime soon. Hmm. Dark, by the way, becoming neighbors with the Protals. He really didn't need to do that. But I kind of like the fact that he's aggressively expanding in the direction of the Protals player. Fleet Beacon number two. This has got to be a frustrating game, by the way, here for Classic. This entire match has not really been going his way. And he's been showing us some, some good gameplay, but... I really do like those Corruptors here in the mix, by the way. They're very tanky. The Stalkers will be taking up some of their hits. And, of course, they are dealing with all of those uh, Phoenixes. So, in the end, 46 Mutas have gone down. But Dark has got such a tremendous amount of gas income. Three arrows worth right over here, compared to his opponent. Who's actually on eight gases right now, but... 
I guess not fully mining all of them. Yeah, Dark's happy to just give up all of his muta, so he's already going close to 100 mutalisks in this one game of StarCraft 2. And considering, again, this started off with a 12 pool hatchery rush. How in the world did he manage to get this many units out? That Nexus is super dead now. And this is making the game hard. Yeah, this is gonna make the game actually nearly impossible for Classic. There's just too many Zerg units available. He's fighting even under the influence of the shield batteries right now. He just does not care. Zerglings could have certainly joined in. That's another prism going down. Corruptors mostly just here to push back all of those phoenixes. More and more mutas. I mean, I said earlier, I believe, that mutas are normally not a fighting unit. Normally they're an harassment unit. But in a game like this, Dark is getting so much value. Game number two. We find ourselves on Royal Blood. And this time around, Classic did send out a probe right at the very start of the game. So not with the gateway, but right at the very beginning. Which now allows him to, well, block the Zerg's natural and at the very least see that this was not a 12 pool opener this time around. Lesson learned. Okay. Yeah, that must have been a pretty tilting game right there for Classic. I mean, to be fair, his defense was solid and he did do a really good job overall. I really don't like the Robo Bay follow up there. And then, you know, Immortal, Cancel, Prism, Cancel, Observer, and then eventually, I mean, it was all just so very slow, right? Like that aggression there from the Protoss just didn't hit. And despite the fact that he did go for like, he did manage to get like 20 worker kills, which I think is more than he really could have bargained for. It was just too late. It was a little too late. Like Zerk was already nearly at four base saturation and there really wasn't a whole lot that Dark needed to worry about in that game after the early game aggression that he decided to pace off. Then Dark going into basically like I think it went upwards of like 50 workers before he went gas and then the first gas is dropped <laughs> onto a lair. What a greedy man. Okay. That was a very dark-esque series so far, though. Or this is a very dark-esque series so far. It's the way the man loves to play the game, and... I'm here for it. I'm a fan. Would you look at that, though? Two minutes. Two minutes and ten seconds or so on that uh, metabolic boost research this time around. Absolute insanity. Okay. Stargate opener this time around from Classic. This is, of course, the standard. And I'm assuming this is going to be an Oracle first this time around. So this is all very normal here thus far. Of course, Dark is good as well in the standard macro match. But I would say that Classic is going to feel more comfortable in this type of game. Classic has actually really been impressing me over the last few months. I would probably consider him to be the third best Protoss in the world right now. I would probably consider Dark to be the third best Zork in the world right now. So that's eh, fair. I think the list probably goes... Ah, hero max packs. It's honestly really hard to say exactly how good max packs is. Again, because he doesn't play offline events, but... I would probably say that max packs is now the rank 1 Protoss in the world, with hero being second. And then classic... Probably creator right below that. I think they would be next. For Zerk... Well, number 1 would be Serral. Number 2 would be Raynor. Raynor's been looking very strong right now. Especially at Home Story Cup, he just looked incredibly powerful. And then, um, I would say Dark is right below that, yeah. So we do have the Gamers 8 event coming up sometime next month, at the beginning of next month. In Saudi Arabia, actually, which is uh, a place I didn't think we were going to see StarCraft 2 tournaments. But, uh, yeah, most of these guys are... Actually, hold up, did Classic manage to qualify for that as well? Let me just double check. Yeah, yeah, so for Korea, Solar, Byun, Dark, Maru, Classic, Cure, Hero, and Creator are qualified. And then for the world bracket, it was Hero Marine, Serral, Spirit, Raynor, Clem, Showtime, Elazer, and Oliveira. That is gonna be one hell of a tournament, actually. I think that's gonna be an absolute banger. Doesn't really get much better than, uh, well, those names that I just mentioned. That's gonna be really fun. I'm excited for that event, but uh, we'll have to see, right? Like, it doesn't happen that often that we have the Europeans facing off, or I guess the world bracket facing off against the Korean bracket. Especially because some of the guys don't really enjoy traveling that much, unless it's like a really large tournament. So, for example, with Home Story Cup, I mean, there was money on the line. I think it was like $10,000. Uh, which, you know, is, is not bad at all, but for a lot of these guys, it is not really worth traveling halfway across the world for, especially, you know, if you have to pay for the flights and the hotel and everything else. I'm not exactly sure if they actually paid for it this time around, but you get what I'm trying to say. Um, especially if you... Oh my god, loses the Oracle. 
Yeah, I don't really like that. Anyways, especially if you've just gotten back from an ESL event, right? There's really not that many exchanges where these guys are facing off against each other, you know, in offline events. So it'll be interesting to see who ends up winning that tournament because it'll be an absolute banger. And again, I've said this many times, Dark keeps saying that he has got to start his mandatory military service soon. But here we are. <laughs> Still not start. I feel like he's been saying that for at least a year now. Guys, it's my final tournament. Not gonna see me for a while. And here we are, once again, playing GSL Code S as well, right? Anyways, okay, so we lost that first Oracle, or, well, the second Oracle, maybe. I don't know which one popped out first, it doesn't really matter. Double Forts on the back of this right now, together with a Twilight Council. I'm a big fan of the Double Forts style, I think it's incredibly good. Can we... okay, there you go. I think the Double Forts style is incredibly powerful, mostly because it, uh, well, it allows you to actually have good Stalkers. Stalkers and Zealots, they feel very mediocre if you compare them to, like, Marines and, for example, Zorklings and Banelings and all that, right? As far as the Protoss units go in that category... Don't lose that. Please don't lose that. Okay, he could have lost it if the Queen decided to commit. Anyhow, Stalkers, when you get them upgrades, though, when you get them the double upgrades going in the Forge, they're actually incredibly powerful. Once again, a Muta opener here from Dark, by the way, so this early game has not really been going... Well, it's not been as greedy, I suppose. I don't really know if you can call the previous early game good. He cut 17 corners and then eventually it became good, I suppose. But that was a little bit dangerous. This is a much more straightforward game. We don't even have a Roach Warren, do we? That's very interesting. So this is, again, Dark playing the opponent. There's a lot of Protoss players that go for an Oracle or two and then straight into Glaive the Depths. If that was what Classic decided to go for in this particular game, Dark would have been in all sorts of trouble. Because if you don't have a Roach Warren, or maybe plus one melee, or even a Bailing Nest against it, you're just in so much trouble. And Dark has not made any of those things. I mean, he started a plus one melee right now, but this is a pretty late plus one melee, all things considered. Not the three and a half minute Evo Chamber that, well, I've seen him play as well. Okay, 12 Mutas are coming up. I think a second oracle would have been so nice to have here, or even a third oracle. Wouldn't have minded that. Anyways, the Mutas at this point are flapping their little wings. Are we gonna fight this? Really? That surprises me a little bit, because there's no way that the hatchery is going to live. Recall here is gonna allow, okay, everything but three stalkers back home, if I'm not mistaken. These Mutas are gonna have to justify this game. Right away, Phoenix production fires up. So this is one of the nice advantages, right, of playing um, a Stargate opener first, you can actually react to this sort of Muta play. Normally it's one of the reasons actually why we don't see a lot of Muta play, because, well, if Protoss already has a Stargate, it's not gonna be that difficult for them to actually get the Phoenixes going. Fleet Beacon starts up together with a second Stargate as well, and these Mutas are getting murdered. Zarklings here attempting to get a run by in over at the fourth base, but that always gets shut down. Yeah, as long as Protoss is on point, I mean, they shouldn't really be able to get in there. It doesn't require much, I mean, it's just pure Ling. Okay, so. Was this a good beginning right here for Dark? Not necessarily. I don't think I like it all too much for him right now. But the man is once again just doubling down on Muta play. Mutas are 100 minerals and 100 gas each. So he's prioritizing his, his gas income here, like no tomorrow. Actually kind of insane. Yep. We're just gonna go straight into 10 gases and then mass muta? I don't want to believe it works out this time around, but maybe Dark has found out something here that allows him to get this to work. So there's the Anion Pulse Crystals again. Classic, by the way, must have realized by now that this is mass muta play. There's no upgrades, by the way, coming up for these mutas, so no plus one flyer upgrades or anything like that. I've got a feeling that... Zerk is gonna get absolutely torn apart here. Maybe I'm mistaken, but I just don't see how this is going to work out in favor of the Zerk player, but... Dark has pulled rabbits out of hats before in one games where I feel like he should not be able to win. Zerk thing's over here. Pretty powerful. Plus one melee at this point is done. Zealots, though, do just fine. They have 1-1, one, one, of course, and they have got the charge upgrade as well. Now we once again go into Corruptors. 
Sometimes it feels like Dark has already finished the main quest when playing StarCraft 2 and he's just doing side quests now. Like he's just completing side quests. Is there an achievement in StarCraft 2 to win games with 500 mutalisks? I don't know. It sometimes feels like it. It really doesn't feel like this should be a reasonable strategy for him to play, but... He continuously gets these weird things going and he continuously somehow makes them work. Mass Muta Corruptor. So Classic at this point has got ranged phoenixes. 11 of them. They're gonna have the little purple beams. Yeah, there we go. And as long as the ping is not all too crazy, these phoenixes should be microed quite handily. The Anion Pulse Crystals is also fantastic, by the way, against Corruptors. Good control here so far by uh, the Phoenix, man. Maybe not perfect, but good enough. He's got a lot of money in the bank, though. Yeah, I was gonna say, maybe add on uh, whatever you can. A few Archons would really not be misplaced. Archons would be fantastic here. I actually don't think Dark should be taking the engagement. I think he should go for full-on counter-attacks. I think he should have done that earlier. Anyways, the Stalker count is looking massive. And even though this was once again a cute strategy right here from Dark, I don't see a way here for him to obtain the victory. More and more Stalkers get warped in. We're gonna try and kill the Prism. Okay, Prism does eventually fall. But I think there might be enough Stalkers available right now to clean up all the Mutas. That's it. GG. Ancient Cistern. Map number three in this best of five series. Standard opener once again in this particular game, and we've got ourselves a Stargate coming up. Classic once more decided to go for a very quick probe scout, and there's a third hatchery now taken, or I guess a second hatchery at the third base location, right over here at the three o'clock position. Natural now comes up. Link speed has been fired up too. And we'll see what sort of unit is gonna pop out of the Stargate first. If I'm gonna make an assumption here, I would say it'll be an Oracle. I know, crazy concept, but I think that Oracles are pretty darn good units, guys. I know, unheard of. Alright, one cheeky little adept here on the right side of the map. It'll probably try to get a shade into the opponent's natural. Oh, I'm mistaken, it's a Void Ray first. I would avoid that if I were you, Classic. <laughs> Special light, guys. So funny. Loco, you're so funny. Everyone. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Um, that being said, the Void Ray does surprise me a little bit. Not a very good unit. It's too expensive. Please don't make it any better, though, Blizzard. I'm just saying. I'm not calling out. I'm not saying that the... No, that's not. You, you mishurt me. I don't think that Void Ray should get any better, because... I remember the Void Ray meta, and I still have nightmares. Anyways, it's gonna be an Oracle on the back of this, and Dark does see this right now as well. So right before that, uh, that Overlord died, this is what he sees. And that can only mean that it's gonna be one big pulsing ball of energy. Void Ray is nice though when it comes to like, you know, harassing the circling group and getting rid of the Overlord Scouts and all that. I like it a lot better if Zerk is going for a double Overlord Scout in every game. Then I would have liked it a whole lot better. In this particular case, not so much. Anyways, Forge together with a Twilight Council very quickly. Third Nexus coming up. And a quick plus one melee here as well for Dark. So these timings are all different than what we've seen so far in this series in game number two. Okay. So, natural expansion taken here for Dark. He's once again mining gas, of course. And I'm assuming our next 100 gas is gonna go into a lair. Dark can take it anywhere between like 4.30 and 5.30, whatever he feels like that day. I think about five minutes will be good, though. Oracle here on the right side of the map. It's gonna be blinked together with plus one ground weapons. Oracle moving forward, Stasis Ward attempted, but that's not going to happen. Adept over here also achieving very little. A lot of Zerklings already available, by the way. So Dark is making a large round of links before the lair, and before he really gets any value out of them. So it's just at 53 workers. He's like, okay, that's what I'm gonna do. Now we're gonna do a Link Flood? Really? What has he seen in this game? I guess his opponent hasn't done any damage? Which honestly may be enough. Yeah, his opponent hasn't really done any damage, so he's like, you know what? It is time for me to do a Link Flood. That Void Ray first, it's gonna take forever. 
No shield battery at the start yet either. I'm starting to be a little bit concerned actually for Classic. Plus one melee is not done yet because the... I think this is about five seconds later, so this... The, 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 what's it called? The Evo Chamber. Normally you start it up a little bit sooner. It's a single Oracle start after a Void Ring. Honestly, this start may just be in uh, all sorts of trouble. Oh, he recalls the probes. I actually like that move. Yeah. So this is basically Classic saying, yo, I think you're probably gonna be able to get my base, but maybe not. Actually, the recall on the probes is really quite clever. He sends them back already, though. I don't know if I like that all too much. Adept here. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. I think you should fire up another Oracle here. He's certainly got the money for it. I know this is now uh, Stalker territory, but... Alright, this actually worked out good for Classic, I think. Yeah, there's a lot of links. Yeah, they have got upgrades, but everything else is super late. Dark going double macro hatch in the main base. I know a lot of Zerg players, uh, they feel guilty whenever they put down macro hatches. Just remember that Dark just did it off of 50-something workers when playing Mass Link. Although, I don't know if I like this game all too much for Dark, though. Another hatchery coming up. Ay -ay 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 -ay. So Dark's just on a single gas. Yeah, now, now finally added on some more, but he's basically been just on a single gas this entire game long. It really does feel like he's doing side quests, doesn't it? Okay, this fourth Nexus, I was gonna say, I don't think you want to blink forward like that with the Stalkers. This fourth Nexus can easily get killed. Don't tell me you're gonna win the game with Masling Dark. That would almost be mean. I'm not gonna lie. I think I've mentioned this before in a video, but back in the day, this must have been like 2014 or so, maybe 2015. Um, I was having a very hard time on the StarCraft 2 ladder, and I was trying my best to break into Grandmaster League again, and I was like, okay, what I need to do is like mix in two infestors right at this point in the game, and then if I take my gases at this point, I'll be able to just barely afford them. And I felt like, you know, I felt like a, a, a you know, you know that scene in Breaking Bad where you first off have them shaking up all the, the different uh, chemicals and they're trying to come up with the perfect solution? That was basically me trying to figure out the perfect concoction to finally be able to win games and break back into GM. And then I watched the Stevano stream, and Stevano was like, Hey guys, got a new account, I'm gonna make it to Grandmaster League today playing only Zerklings and Queens. And he played the same server as me, he played the same opponents as me, and he would win games and make it actually into Grandmaster League just playing Zerklings and Queens. And here I am sitting, like I am, I am, I don't know, reinventing the wheel. Sometimes these strange build orders that don't really make a lot of sense can actually work out as long as your fundamentals are strong enough. Even though it really does feel like Dark is making it about 10 times as difficult as it needs to be. Okay, so in the end, where are we at? Uh, 82 Zerklings, that's quite a bit. We've already lost 124. Yeah, we're going about 200 Zerklings here. First he went 100 plus Mutas? Muta Corruptor and... <laughs> At least get Adrenal Glands! Like, if you're gonna get an upgrade, at least get Adrenal Glands, you know? Like, 40% attack speed on these links would be nuts. Oh no, Classic is actually falling apart. Look at that Void right targeting the freaking Ravager Cocoon. That is not what you want to do. He's going for a full-on counter-attack, though. And maybe, you know what, maybe this army can get... S no, 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 oh, he lost the Prism. Okay, never mind, it's GG. Yep. Neo Humanity. Game number four in this best of five series. Now, I actually already fast forwarded to the two minute mark. And then I realized, wait a second, the scouting probe is gone. What in the world happened to this scouting probe? Don't tell me that classic. Uh, okay, lost it to the drones. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, yeah, that's exactly what happened. That is a clear indication that classic is not feeling all too hot right now. Playing Mental Warfare versus Dark. Not really something that anybody really wants to do. Alrighty, so, Cybercore here at the front. Next is right behind it, second pile in the main base. I'm assuming we're gonna be going for this gas geyser right now. 
Okay, we're not gonna go for the second gas geyser right now. What exactly are we gonna produce then? Uh, classic? Do we not need the second gas geyser yet? I know that Protoss has been changing up their early game ever so slightly lately, but we'll have to see exactly what he decides to go for if he does not want it. Okay, he decides to go Robo Facility. Robo Facility together with an Adept and I guess the Warp Gate then eventually? Hmm. Okay, we'll have to see what the Robo Facility is for. Classic has got something in store for us, that's for sure. Okay, so anyways. For sure. Nice, Loco. Got a forward third base right here for Dark. So this gives some access to the high yield Vespian Geyser. And this gives, uh, well, eight gas a trip rather than a conventional four, which is twice as much. It does, however, have 2250 gas in it in total, just like every other Vespian Geyser in the game. So even though it does give you a nice burst of income, it does mine out, of course, very quickly as well. So you only get about a gas boost for maybe six minutes or so, something like that. But oftentimes that's all that Dark really needs. So second gas has still not started up. Okay. So we're just gonna go Prism into Mass Gateway. So Dark wants to see this as well. Oh, okay. He would have scouted it, I believe, if he decided to sack the Overlord. But at this point, this may actually work out quite nicely here for Classic. So Classic has decided to go for 32 probes. He's cut worker production already. One gas. And then six gateways? Immortal on the back it is too. Okay, so Classic is feeling on- No, we're gonna go seven gateways. Eight gateways? Can you even produce eight gateways? Okay, I was gonna say, I, I, don't, I think seven gateways is probably the most you can ever afford with 32 probes. Uh, I think Classic is agreeing here that yes, he is feeling a little bit out of it. And if that's the case... Well, he should be very, very careful. Now, because of that center base over here, right? Dark decides to knock down the cooling tower, which I really like because this effectively blocks off this area of the map. So if Protoss wants to move across, he's gonna have to go around or he's gonna have to knock down some of those rocks again. But whatever he chooses, it's gonna slow down the attack. So this is just a, a gateway all in. Yeah, seven gateways here in total. He's gonna wall himself in fully. Okay, Classic is ready to make this a complete all in. Dark has got 40 workers in total. Well, he had 40 workers in total. Decides to go for a spine crawler over here. I think he has to give up that base. There's not a whole lot he can do about that base. Yeah. Okay, Classic decides to run by it as well, which I really don't mind. Queen over here in the front. Can we get a transfusion on her? That would be fantastic. Okay, no, not going to happen. A lot of units here available already, though, for Dark. Nice all in here from Classic, though. This is one of those dangerous attacks, man. These 32 propolins are very difficult to read. The problem is, it also needs to deal critical amounts of damage. At this point, it is certainly not worth it just yet. Good micro over here by Dark, microing back these units. Transfusing wherever he can. Additional zealots are coming up right now. Many of them are producing all at the same time. Even the drones are now helping out. Only 33 drones remain right now for Dark, and he's gonna lose a little bit more if he's not careful. Okay. Nine drones in total going down here, and maybe even more. That Prism in a little bit of trouble. The Queens are trying to target it down for a while. Now the Roaches are trying to clean up whatever they can, but that's an additional big round of Stalkers and Zealots coming up right now for our Protoss player. Yeah, this is a build that I struggle against all the time. It feels a little silly. Hello. Hello, Dark. We've got a big chunk of units just sort of sitting here. Oh no, he decides to bring them back home. I lose against these sort of all-ins all the time because they're actually very difficult to see coming. 32 probes is uh, not something, like you can scout the second gas in the main base, so that's really your only tell. But other than that, it's very difficult to figure out how many workers Protoss has actually produced. Okay, now with these reinforcements showing up all of a sudden, uh, this becomes a lot more manageable. I thought he wanted to go for an attack. Recall used right here by Classic. <sighs> As Dark actually holds. Really? What in the world? How long were those units sitting out here for? They must have been sitting out there for a while. Dark at some point, oh, army hotkeyed and brought them back home. Maybe if they went in for the offensive right away, he could have forced some warp ins in the natural of the Protoss. I think that was the original plan. Okay, Dark redroning once again. Classic now also getting a bunch of probes of his own, though. 
So, yeah, he decided to get the second gas going, and I think he'll just be forced to go into another all-in. I don't really think he's got any other choice. Very interesting. Very interesting. So in order to get out here, he's gonna either have to bring the prison back, or he's gonna have to kill one of his own pylons. Classic, yeah, just stuck on two bases here. That's exactly what Dark is scanning for right now over here. Making sure that there is no third base option here on the side of the Pro Dolson. If he's not planning on making a third base anytime soon, he should really just make non-stop army here, right? Maybe squeeze out a couple drones? But you don't really want to be caught off guard against too many workers. I think three Ravagers is fantastic. Three Ravagers is gonna be enough to... Well... Bile down the Prism. I think actually with this Prism, two would be plenty, but... Three is always a good number in general. And this is now actually very unfortunate for Classic. I thought he had that one in the bag, but... The micro right there from Dark was solid enough, and he didn't over-drone, right? So Dark was sitting at 40 workers there. If he would have been at, like, 44, I think that game would have been over. Or this game would have been over. Oh my god, this is taking forever. Jeez Louise. ay 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 Okay, you take a slower approach here, Classic. There's still one Zealot stuck, by the way. I'm assuming that's by design? Poor guy. Actually, maybe he should be happy that he can't make it, because I've got a feeling they are running straight to their deaths. Okay. So there is an Overlord over here. Every unit counts. Biles here are gonna be so incredibly powerful, though. Yeah, that's exactly what Dark decides to- Oh no, the Prism, the Prism, the Prism! That's exactly what Dark decides to focus on right here as well. Getting those Zealots in the fight is gonna be difficult. I love the way that he's just spreading around those Biles. Trying to make it difficult for Protoss to engage. Still though, this is a scary Protoss army, but Dark's really good at microing these type of forces. He's got a lot of links. Okay, and he does decide to engage with them right now. One of the Immortals derping around the back there, not really helping out in the fight at all. And I think that Dark can just go for the surround right now. He's trying his best to just, yeah, pick up units with the Prism and micro his ass off, but it's not going to happen. And just like that, it's Dark who wins the KSL Weekly number 17. Hey, if you enjoyed watching this video, take the one second that it takes to hit the like button down below. It really does help me. And if you really enjoyed it, I try to post new videos pretty much every day. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. For now, though, have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to smile, and I'll see you once again tomorrow for another video.